sacred mysteries. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sacred Mysteries Worldwide Channel. Today, we are going to explore a very, very important and wonderful topic that doesn't get as much exposure that I would like to see is um, the tradition of hoodoo, the spiritual tradition of hoodoo. I have a wonderful guest today, Mama Yana. She is well known in the spiritual community um, and she will tell you more about herself, but I'm, I'm just very excited because she is, is rich in hoodoo tradition and legacy and uh, knowledge. So we're going to get down with the African-American spiritual tradition of hoodoo today. Welcome, Mama. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and it's a pleasure. pleasure. And I'm always grateful to be selected to do an interview or anything like that. Um, and I don't take it for granted. So thank you for having me. Thank you. So today I wanted to start off first with, um, you know, you know, saying a little bit more about um, hoodoo. And today we are, we're going to have our discussions and hoodoo has not, it has gotten a bad rap in the media, in Hollywood, and, and especially mm -hmm. it has is somewhat uh, like an enemy of the traditional Christian. <laughs> oh yes. And yes. so so much negativity has um been spun around hoodoo and people really know very little that are not involved. And so this is an opportunity to know more and to get educated about it because it is our African American spiritual tradition that came from our ancestral traditions from Africa. So we this is our branch. We have branches in the in Cuba and all the Caribbean and other parts mm -hmm. of the world. And we have our own and it's time to bring that to the forefront and, and let people know about it. Yes, you you're right on point when it comes to that. This is um Hoodoo, first and foremost, yes, it must be recognized as it is um African American. You know, I think a lot of people get the misconception in regards to that, um, thinking that hoodoo can, it, it exists everywhere, but people have to understand that it really is something that is African-American, it's indicative to African-Americans, so on and so forth. But, you know, of course, we're going to dive in a little bit in regards to that. Yes. Yes. So please give us a, a little bit more about you, your background and how you came to your spiritual path and let us let us hear from you about that. So um, I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Um, and then my mother is from Yazoo, Mississippi. Uh, and then my father's side is from Shelby, Tennessee, Memphis. So, you know, um, so with that being said, if you know anybody from Chicago or anybody who's African-American in Chicago, they say that we are kind of country in a sense, almost as if we hadn't left the country in a sense, um, but more so like the old ways people would consider like the old ways. So whenever people talk to me, they're like, well, well how old are you? Or so on and so forth. So um, so born and raised in Chicago, my family, very spiritual oriented family. Um, so with them being open to spirituality, both my mother's side and my father's side, um, and actually having the whole village raise me, both sides, mm -hmm. um, I get a lot of education and understanding more about spirituality. So that's so a lot of people may ask me, how did I get into spirituality? Well, it was always there. I have a mother that she's always talking to spirits. And I have a father that be talking to tongues. So it's mm -hmm. like, um, it's, it's, a, it, when I grew up, it was, um, I don't want to say a different experience because I didn't know it was different until I became older. Mm -hmm. Um, especially living in Chicago. I lived, um, uh, the North side of Chicago, where there are a lot of different um, nationalities and ethnic groups, especially that are African diasporic, in addition to continental African. 
And so when I would converse with even my friends as I was younger, um, nothing seemed as though it was different. Mm -hmm. And then um, welcoming into social media um, in the later years, mm -hmm. I started to notice the thing where, you know, being spiritual in the sense that I thought it was, was mm -hmm. not the norm per se. I mm -hmm. think it's, I still think it's normal, but I can, mm -hmm. now I'm seeing other sides, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I am not the one that had to run away from the church and figure mm -hmm. things out and so on and so forth. The church was welcome in my family, but so, so was uh, spiritualism and um, mm -hmm. Buddhism and mm -hmm. uh, Cuban look at me and all type of stuff. So I didn't grow up um, feeling as though that you had to choose one mm -hmm. thing. And I still don't have that. And to this day, I have support, whatever I choose for my family. So, I'm, you know, that's basically how I'm here now. Um, so I'm able to express that on different levels mm -hmm. because of that. What a beautiful and rich and very loving upbringing to be yes. able to have your spirituality just exist in your life and be so normal to you. But then when you kind of grow up and enter into the world, you realize not everybody's doing this. Everybody's kind of here and there and not really as accepting, whereas you had all of those different. And it sounds very similar to me, too, because I had the same kind of upbringing where there were Buddhists and there were, you know, they could be in the church. They could be Christians, Catholic, Buddhist, um, Lukumi, um, a Ghanaian uh, culture, the Akan tradition, ancient Kemet. So all of it was welcome. And so therefore you have the freedom to really grow into your natural self. Yes. And I love how you mentioned growth um, as it relates to what spirituality really is it's for the spirit a lot of people don't get that it's more so about the spirit self-actualization and um kind of what the subject is is faith healing you know and i love that about hoodoo um a lot of people think that maybe uh spirituality is if you 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 know how to do jars or you burn candles you're spiritual no 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 no, no. <laughs> It's all about growth and um, growth within self so that you can help the community. You can help mm. your bloodline. You can help your family. So, yes, mm. I love that word growth there. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. And I think you really touched on something that a lot of people get attracted to in hoodoo. But it's just the... What did you say? Like the, the accoutrement, the, 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 the extra stuff that, that comes along with it. But the heart and soul is healing, growth. Absolutely. Learning yeah. who you are, being true to who you are, you know, and that the power and the freedom to, you know, be empowered to become who you are. But people get attracted to how they can use energy to mm -hmm. do certain things and that's good you know it's good as an attractor but when someone gets serious then they get to know the heart and the soul of what hoodoo is yes yes absolutely mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so um in regards to hoodoo and recognizing what it is you know um as we acknowledged earlier in the um discussion that you know Hoodoo is African-American, you know, mm -hmm. it is of African-American traditions and logic. Um, and unfortunately, like you said, um, you know, people just want to limit it to be uh, magic. And that's misleading, you know. Um, it is culture. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, the reality of African-Americans, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and there goes the logic. And, and so hoodoo is the set of practices and beliefs and logic that draw on the nature and its perceived energies mm -hmm. to shape the conditions of life. So what are the conditions of life? The conditions of life would be societal conditions of life here in the U.S. And mm -hmm. so therefore, in order to get ahead in the conditions of life, we have to um, incorporate healing. Some people call it 
folk healing, some people call it faith healing, so on and so forth. But it is something, uh, hoodoo is something that is very pragmatic. Mm -hmm. um, and with that being said, um, as far as the practice, I tell people all the time, if you're African American, you grew up in hoodoo. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone tell you you did. You may not know it because it's so natural to you. Mm -hmm. It is your culture. Mm -hmm. But if you think about, if you talk to someone who recognizes hoodoo for what it is, mm -hmm. and that is also African American, mm -hmm. you will understand, oh my goodness, I grew up in this too. Yes. Oh, my grandmother taught me this. My mother taught me this. Mm -hmm. My uncle taught me this. And mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Oh, we say that too. Oh, we throw salt over our left shoulder too. So mm -hmm. on and so forth. And then it, it, a light bulb goes off. And that's my mission. <laughs> like, <laughs> I never aim to say, oh, I am the one that grew up in spirituality, blah, 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 this and that. No, 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 no. I want people to understand you did too. Mm -hmm. You just didn't see it now as you get older. With some people that's trying to find a way back. Yes. You know, yes. They are seeing that now. Yes. And yeah. I'm glad. I'm very, very happy. But as you said before, it is now getting a bad rap mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people that are trying to find their way. Therefore, it is becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy about it being popular. But with popularity comes publicity. And with, mm -hmm. you know, there's different types of propaganda that comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, but I am thankful that we're doing this interview. We're doing this so that um, we can get the word out about who to yes. bring you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the way you say that, you know, many of us or all of us really grew up with it. Didn't know. Uh, my mother is from Chester, South Carolina. My grandmother too, her mother. And um, there's certain things that I started to recognize, you know, that, were part of Hugh Hoodoo that she would do. You know, you don't leave your hair nowhere. <laughs> That's one of the things, like you said, you drop a fork, you got to do something, you, you know, something else happens, you, you, you got to do this. And so those little things that were just a part of your life, it was a way of life. So you didn't distinct distinguish it as something different. It was part of your culture, part of what you did. It was natural. So that's why a lot of people don't know that they already grew up with it because it's just a way of life. You know, when mama and grandma and grandpa and uncle, auntie, they taught you. They was like, oh, 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 hold on. That happened. Wait a minute. We got to do this right here. Come on, step back a few steps. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Depending on who on the family, you may have to turn around three times right. too and spit and make a cross and all type of stuff. Exactly. You know, they call that back in the day being quote unquote superstitious. But if you look at the definition of superstitious, it's really the belief of supernatural things that can occur, you know. Mm. So, you mm. know, I come from a very superstitious uh family. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember looking at my mom like, okay, ma, okay. Um, and there was a time that I did say to myself, like, I don't believe in all that stuff no more. Oh, that was, uh, I shouldn't have never did that. <laughs> but I railed myself back. I was breaking all the cultural taboos and I was missing, I ignored all the omens and all, <laughs> oh my God, I suffered. I'm telling you. And, and, I said, and you did, right? <laughs> <laughs> I never do that again. Even if I don't understand the omen, mm -hmm. even if I don't understand why we do this and we it's considered taboo and so on and so forth, I don't break them anymore. Right. I don't break them anymore. Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, because I've learned. <laughs> exactly. I uh uh no. Mm -mm. Even with my daughter, I brought her up with certain things, you know, we, the certain places we don't step when we're walking out in the street. And, you know, so she's all aware and everything, you know, you don't want to ignore those things. Like you say, you, you see the repercussions, you know, there's some wisdom in there. Now, we might not have the part of the wisdom in terms of the explanation might not be there all the time, but there is wisdom in the reason why we do what we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. touching on you know the roles in hoodoo you know mm -hmm. um, in regards to the roles of hoodoo 
I think another thing and another reason why people may want to group it or categorize it of doing, you know, the spiritual workings and what is more attractive is mm -hmm. because everyone believes that hoodoo is just one thing, which are the mm -hmm. workings. Mm -hmm. But they forget that there's people that are uh, were better at healing. There were people, mm -hmm. as far as being medicine people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's different type of medicine people. There mm -hmm. are uh, spiritual medicine people, meaning they will do more spiritual workings mm -hmm. to cure a person or mm -hmm. the people that work more with herbs to actually have the person internalized mm -hmm. or that they're the person or the people that would actually do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And these titles were called doctors, right? You had your mm -hmm. conjure doctor, you had your you know, mm -hmm. uh, what they they even had, um, what do you call it, a um, witch doctor. They even mm -hmm. said that back in the day, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so there are different types of doctors, too. Mm -hmm. So I think another thing is, is people are ignoring that. Everyone mm -hmm. cannot do the same thing. Everyone doesn't do the same mm -hmm. thing in Hudu. Um, mm -hmm. And so in regards to the roles, um, and that's another thing I just want to point out. That's why I know everyone grew up in Hulu, just because you may not have grew up in the way that I grew up mm -hmm. in it or uh, versus someone else. It doesn't mean that you didn't. If you are African-American, you did. You may have had a grandmother or you may have had a mother or an aunt that can see visions and they were mm -hmm. prophesied and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. That's a part of hoodoo. Mm -hmm. And the way that they would see visions, the way that they would prophesy, the way that they would explain the dreams and the meaning mm -hmm. of dreams is based off of the culture of African Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, dreaming of fish equates to pregnancy. You know, that is something that is considered hoodoo because it is African American logic, mm -hmm. but it is something that is considered a phenomenon in which that we believe in. So mm -hmm. that's an aspect of hoodoo. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that cod liver oil is going to help with vitamin C, uh, vitamin D deficiency. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I even see nowadays that we're even getting uh, away from the old traditional healings, mm -hmm. and now because everyone wants to burn the candle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now we're suffering uh in regards to our health you know yeah. um mm -hmm. people uh are keeping mucus in, in their system but you know they don't know that you can go ahead and boil up some moving you know mm -hmm. things of that sort um mm -hmm healing practices in regards to your eyes, drinking eye bright. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, there's even some old, old practices, you know, people uh, may not do because of the society that we live in. Um, we have gotten away from raising our livestock, right? So, um, again, there were certain doctors that would basically um, heal people in many different ways. So, mm -hmm. you know, we eat chicken, but back in the day, you we kind of, you know, we raise the chicken, mm -hmm. right? And if we raise the chicken, we may slaughter the chicken, but we will consider that chicken a sacrifice because mm -hmm. we, and we will slaughter the chicken. We may actually use nothing of the chicken that's going to go to waste. We may actually use the blood. That's and, right. um, you know, back in the day, there's actually a recipe in which that you put some of that chicken blood on the back of the neck to actually mm -hmm. help with blindness and mm. then you go hang you prick it up you cut it up and then you pray over the bird thank you for the sacrifice and help and ask for you know because the bird gave its life it the bird yeah. is going to create nourishment and then you prick it up and then you may consume the bird that's internalizing mm. the medicine mm. while simultaneously using it externally right. and so that's what um a lot of hoodoo has a lot of too, mm -hmm. as well as African traditional spirituality mm -hmm. and African traditional religions. I typically um, categorize Afri uh, hoodoo under African traditional spirituality mm -hmm. rather than ATR, mm -hmm. but it is still a baseline. All of that Africanness is the baseline because mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the ancestors that came together creating um, African-Americans, which is the Eve tribe, the Yoruba, uh, mm. people of the Congo, mm -hmm. um, and the Igbo, and so on and so forth, is they hadn't come together. Mm -hmm. um, 
with their ideologies, creating mm -hmm. and birthing a new ideology mm -hmm. in a society of North America, hoodoo wouldn't exist. You can it's see the Africanism mm -hmm. in hoodoo, mm. um, especially if you're a person that um, practices ATR. Mm -hmm. Especially, yes. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true because, um, you know, my my way into African traditional re religion was through the botanicas going to get, you know, the readings and then to get the supplies and then you meet people and then, you know, and then you start and the espiritismo, the spiritualism part of it with, you know, where someone is working, they, you know, doing the candles and they, you know, they're telling you and they're reading you right off the cuff, you know, and they got a glass of water and a candle and that's it. And they might not have even that because they're tapped in. And then they say, well, you need to go do this. You need to give you a recipe of something to do to help you heal or, you know, help put you back on the path or calm you and give you peace, you know, distill the negativity from around you. And so that before I even knew what, you know, the word hoodoo, those were the things that I was drawn to. And then mm -hmm. it felt so natural. It felt so real. And then I started to recognize hoodoo more in my life that was already there. I was like, oh, I remember that jar in the back, in the corner, you know, and, you know, my mother had and all my mother's friend had. And I was like, well, what's that? She says, you don't want to know. I'm not going to tell you, but it's something so-and-so for this, you know. And it's like, okay. So, yeah, it's, you know. It's, it was, you know, it was a way for me to recognize hoodoo later on in my life was being introduced through the spiritualism and then the African tradition, like you said earlier, Lukumi, a lot of that is so similar. Absolutely. Very much so similar. And I love the fact that um, you mentioned spiritualism. Um, mm -hmm. There is another aspect of hoodoo that I do not get as a spiritualist. I don't think gets enough. I'm sorry. I don't think that this gets enough recognition, mm -hmm. which is the incorporation or the branch of hoodoo, which is spiritualism. You mm -hmm. know, um, it's, it's uh, something that should be recognized and it has been existed or recognized for what it is mm -hmm. called spiritualism since the mid 1800s, I want to say maybe a little bit um, before then, you mm -hmm. know, starting with uh, with like uh, people like Rebecca Cox, you know, the mm -hmm. Sojourner Truth and Harry and Tubman. <laughs> and then you want to fast forward to um, who we deem as more like the queen of African-American spiritualism, mm -hmm. um, although I just named. Um, African American women who were spiritualists in their own right. They held mm -hmm. what's called um, gatherings. People would say it's a seance, but they held gatherings, readings, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Would be Mother Leafy Anderson and under with Catherine mm -hmm. um, Seals, Mother Catherine Seals, and uh, mm -hmm. Mother Maud, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, those people. Leave and so, name. Mother yes. uh, Leafy. <laughs> Yes, Mother Leafy Anderson, she started her first spiritualist church in Chicago, Illinois, mm. you know, and she understood that um, the concept of spiritual guides, you know, and spiritual guides, her spiritual guide, her main primary spiritual guide was Black Hawk, you know, mm. who was a Native American. Mm -hmm. um, and he, she, what she did is she brought Black Hawk into the spiritualist church mm. or the spiritualist temple. Sometimes they would call it temple. Mm -hmm. And he was considered maybe a uh, the protector, you mm -hmm. know. And the African-American spiritualist church was a little bit different than those who were uh, of white Americans. But once upon a time, they were together. Mm. They did kind of work together. Um, uh, and then came Jim Crow. And then the segregation came in mm. and the African-American um, uh, people, we had to, of course, we were forced out mm -hmm. of our own tradition mm -hmm. um, and spiritualism. But mm -hmm. it, 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 it's something um, that needs to be recognized because in those churches that were uh, African-American only um, mm -hmm. due to being forced out, what they did is they incorporated uh, 
ideologies of voodoo. It said mm -hmm. um, Catholic ideologies because Mother uh, Catherine took uh, the spiritualist church down on to New Orleans and then mm -hmm. on into the Memphis, Tennessee. There's mm -hmm. still spiritualist churches that exist today. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, now I don't want to say now we have this concept of spiritualism, but what I am noticing is that um, we always had it. Mm -hmm. It's not really recognized and the mediumship and it's happening in, mm -hmm. um, you know, being, mm. being able to prophesize mm. was, it is a huge part of the African-American yes. um, spiritualist church. Um, and we incorporate the idea of mm -hmm. spiritual guides. Hey, you have a guide that's over this. You have a guide that's over healing. You have mm -hmm. a guide that comes with you whenever you travel on mm -hmm. that train. You have a guide, mm -hmm. you know, so on and so forth. We often think, and I've noticed that now this new wave, mm -hmm. you know, this is something that didn't exist in our community, you know, until we got into the concepts where our brothers and sisters came over, um, who are Cuban and uh, Puerto Rican and so mm -hmm. on and so forth, bring in Sanse and Luca Me. Mm -hmm. And this new wave of people didn't know or didn't think that we had it before them. And I love whenever I express the idea and I tell people, oh, yeah, you know, and you can still visit the churches now. And they're like, what? Yeah. Yes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, they still exist. They are mm -hmm. diminishing in numbers because, um, you know, people are not willing to accept them for who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and so therefore the churches are not running the way they should. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, these type of churches are dedicated to giving to the community. Mm -hmm. The concept of cult drives, the concept of food drives, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, in the spiritualist church mm -hmm. was a concept created by Mother Leafy Anderson. And she Ooh. taught all of her people that and they went right. on and made temples that had to follow that and went hard mm -hmm. on it. So that's another reason why it's almost like a code of honor and an oath. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. It's another reason why these temples are diminishing because you, they need the support yes. in order to hold that up. But yeah. You what know. a legacy. I never heard of that before, but it makes so much sense. You mm -hmm. know, that's how we took care of each other. And it comes from that spiritual base and feeling connected and responsible for the community at large, not just your own people that know who you are and come to the church, but it's for the community at large. And oh, yeah. I love that. Wow. Yes, mm. yes, yes. She was very adamant on making sure that the community was taken care of, especially mm -hmm. Mother Maud. Now, Mother Maud, her picture is circulating everywhere but um her name is not um on her picture i've noticed i've made a post about it about who she was because i felt like she needed her her flowers that people were going to use her picture mm. and um you know so the titles that i'm seeing on her picture is you know, grandmother knew this, grandma knew this, grandma knew this. Mm, okay. You gotta say who that woman is in the picture. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, granted, a lot of people may not know, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, Mother Maud was an extraordinary person. She was a, a very highly favored medium, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, she was someone that when other spiritualist churches did not continue giving to the community, oh, she would not let go of that. Mm -hmm. That That's literally what she was mm -hmm. known for. Mm -hmm. um, so if the children needed coats, they knew what church to come to go to. Mm -hmm. They needed the toys for Christmas. They knew what church to go to, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And, um, you know, and Mother Leafy Anderson kind of came up with the idea of Yes, we want to cultivate our people's gifts, but there are some people that, you know, can take classes. So she started mm -hmm. um, the idea, okay, well, we can, you can charge for classes in order that, so for, us to, for us to sustain mm -hmm. the ideology of uh, African-American spirituality and be mm -hmm. able to continue to give mm -hmm. to the churches and so on and so forth. She was a very 
business savvy and innovative uh, mm -hmm. woman that was grounded in her beliefs. It was a reason for that, mm -hmm. you know. You know, that's the society in which that we live in. Hint mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. We have to we have to learn to survive. Yes. 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 And that was it. And it's an outgrowth of that survival, of that fight, of that, you know, I'm I'm not going to let this circumstance that I am in defeat me. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow them to stamp out everything about who I am from where I came from. I'm going to let it survive because I know what it's about. I know what it does for my people. So I'm going to, those are those people who were called to it. They carried the tradition in their bosom, in their hair, in every which way that they could with them. And they carried on as much as they could to pass it down. And um, because uh, it's what sustained us. You know, we don't give hoodoo enough honor in us being able to survive what we went through in this country. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh-huh. And, you know, speaking of survival, another aspect of hoodoo I see that may not be recognized is mental strength. Mm. You know, um. The mental strength that our ancestors had here in the U.S. as African descendants is unmatched, you know. And I think about the lore of Hulu. That's another thing people aren't coming to grips that Hulu has lore. Mm. The lore is embedded in its logic, just like any other culture, Hulu also has lore. Mm -hmm. And so we have lore. I love to talk about the lore of that flying African or our mm -hmm. most known um, deified ancestor, which is High John the Conqueror. Yes. High John, if you look even at old slave narratives, mm -hmm. there will be some people who were once enslaved, and you know, the slave narratives was recorded, um, I believe, that it, it, between the dates of 1935 and 19. Um, 39 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but these some of these people were in their 80s and yes. some of the people were in their 60s and so on and so forth so you know the abolishment of slavery was um 1865 mm -hmm. you know and but of course there was sharecropping mm -hmm. afterwards so on and so forth but my point is is that a lot of these people would literally call on the spirit of high john mm -hmm. and according to the lore it is said while on the plantation you knew that the spirit of High John was around as if people got to laughing. Mm. Or they broke out in a song. Mm. Or they started dancing. Mm. It's like all of a sudden, out of the blue, and it happened like in a wave. So oh. that, you know the people was catching the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And so and usually this wave will happen is when people were on the brinks of breaking down, though. Mm. You know, they were tired. And so... All of a sudden, boom, this wave of spirit come up. And um, they some of the people would say they heard him laughing. And so, mm. therefore, they started to laugh. And according to the lore, it is said that High John had this ability to leave your body there mm -hmm. and take your mind to other places. Oof. So that your body mm. may be working automatic. They mm. said the overseers would never see that they were the actual person was mm. gone, that they mm. were actually gone. Mm -hmm. And so this understanding is something that we don't realize that is very much necessary for our survival. When we feel like we're ready to go, we mm -hmm. should not commit suicide in mm -hmm. a sense, because there's a lot of us that will give up. And we mm -hmm. give up in many different ways, There's yes. many different ways to commit mm -hmm. suicide. Mm -hmm. um, and so our body will still be here, but a lot of us will be zombies. Yeah. Or we may break and we may go crazy, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or we may break um, and we will start doing self-inflicted uh, things. And we forget mm -hmm. about the family, we forget about our children and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. But our ancestors actually came. Uh, from a time where that would, they could not do that. They did not mm. do that. They couldn't. And it is mm -hmm. said, according to the Lord, that Hajjan said that he was going to go back to Africa, but he will be back. And um, 
he left the spirit in the root in a root mm -hmm. but also it is said that he did come back and he said that he told the people one day you're going to be free mm -hmm. and he said hold on one day you're going to be free I'm getting everything together because certain mm -hmm. people had to be able to fight certain things and some people have to yes. be able to heal some people have every, mm -hmm. everybody's a, uh, you know assigned to different things mm -hmm. and it said that he came back, he influenced a band of uh, enslaved um, people, and they rebelled. And this mm. caused a wave of rebellions. And the mm. next thing you know, mm. like you promised, there mm -hmm. was freedom. Mm. Mm -hmm. But imagine if that mind of mm -hmm. many of our ancestors, you know, yeah. you can't fight a war. Can't fight a war overheated without mm. being able to plan. Mm. And there was a lot of planning over there. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, that is a big part of hoodoo as well. Yes. It's healing your mind and your body and your soul mm -hmm. or maintaining the mind and body and soul because for the African American or those who are Afro in the U.S., it is hard. Yes. Yes. The classism still exists. Mm hmm Yes. It still exists. And it, the hoodoo value principles goes along with understanding how to survive here in mm -hmm. this society However, your mind and your body and your soul has to be aligned in order for you to get ahead and climb the ladder. That yeah. climbing the ladder, unfortunately, is the survival. It is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's how the generations are to survive after us, too. Because mm -hmm. it starts with us. We are in charge of people that we haven't given birth to yet. And mm -hmm. also, we are uh, responsible for the legacy of those who came before us as well. Yes. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot of people leave that out or thinking mm -hmm. that the, that does not exist in hoodoo. Oh, absolutely, it does. Mm -hmm. You can't be self-destructive. You right. can't be out here acting crazy and wild and out. Mm -hmm. No, you can't because um, it serves no purpose. Hoodoo mm -hmm. has purpose. Yes. Yes, as the people who have purpose. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and 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 along with that purpose also goes that connection that to each other, to the legacy, to the history, to the ancestry, and to the land because this became our land as well. You know, so yeah. it's like all of that strengthens you and makes your foundation strong. So that climbing that ladder, it ain't a shaky ladder. It's a ladder of oh, built yeah. strength. <laughs> strength and all kinds of magic and medicine and, and healing in there. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. That is the one of the other values of hoodoo. We believe mm -hmm. that everything is interconnected mm. from the people that came before you, which is ancestors. So ancestor veneration and honoring mm. um and giving reverence is very mm -hmm. important, mm -hmm. you know, not forgetting what people have done in order for you to be here so that you can find inspiration. You know, there was one quote that I found and I wish I can remember who said it, but it, it is someone famous. And I, mm -hmm. I am so ashamed that, you know, I can't remember his <laughs> name because it's with the quote stood out. It says <laughs> that everyone has inspiration in regards to their uh, ancestors, but the Negro. Mm. And in Hoodoo, giving ancestor reverence mm -hmm. and honor is so that we can keep up the inspiration of those who came before us. Mm -hmm. There has been a lot of work to convince us that we came from people that wasn't Full of strength, mental mm -hmm. strength, mm -hmm. especially, mm -hmm. you know, that's a dog finger. I shouldn't have did that. So that's that, that <laughs> little taboo I was talking about. Uh -huh. that uh -huh, uh -huh. So the mental, 
<laughs> you do that, you have to supposed to do this. So, mm-hmm. um, mental strength, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, I have seen that there is a generation of people nowadays that saying, "Oh, I am not my ancestors." Excuse you. I want to be my ancestors and more. Yes, I wish. Because some of you all cry over the littlest things that they would never cry over. <laughs> some of you all want to claim hoodoo, mm-hmm. but you break over everything and you want to put everybody in a jar just because they offended you and said one thing you didn't like. Mm-hmm. No, I come from ancestors that did things with purpose and for a reason um, and justifiable reason and yeah. uh, enough justifiable where they weren't going to waste their energy on something that was a small surface Mm -hmm. level or superficial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they were busy trying to uh, create something for their, uh, their legacy or or their descendants to live on. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, people that's in my family um, who uh, were famous uh, blues magicians and, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I was traveling um, up to New York, bringing mm-hmm. um, Mississippi uh, Delta Blues over into uh, to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, playing with WC Handy uh, Band in um, mm-hmm. Tennessee, mm-hmm. Um, in the Rock and Soul Museum, and mm-hmm. you know, it's, uh, come from a long line of people that has uh, initiations as uh, Eastern Stars, and also. Mm-hmm. Uh, masons and mm-hmm. all this type of stuff. So mm-hmm. very, very spiritual people. Mm-hmm. And and I tell everybody, you do, you come from a long line of good people too mm-hmm. that fought for you. I said, go ahead, do your genealogy. I bet you, you shake that tree, shake it. You're gonna if you shake that tree, I guarantee you, mm-hmm. you're going to find s- something. Mm-hmm. That can you can find inspiration in mm-hmm. you know? absolutely, and what it does it 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 when you when we give our ancestor reverence is something mm-hmm. inside of our DNA because we have the DNA, it mm-hmm. gives us a jolt. Yes, and it, it those flashbacks and those memories because you you know they say some the, we carry the memories of our ancestors yeah. as well, mm-hmm. and those memories start to ignite. And we start to walk in in their footsteps. Mm-hmm. So that's why ancestor reverence. One of the reasons mm-hmm. um, in which that I'm I am touching on today why mm-hmm. it's very important, and we mm-hmm. do, and that's why we do it today. That's yeah. why um, you know we ensure that they have nourishment mm-hmm. uh, by not forgetting them in the holiday season as well. You know? That's right. Uh, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever, whenever there was a family gathering. Yes. You know, we gather around the table, we bow our head, we pray, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But also, there came joy and togetherness and unification whenever we mm-hmm. come together. That's mm-hmm. why we have family reunions. Mm-hmm. So on mm-hmm. and so forth. Everybody got a plate. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Everybody got a plate. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I love and that. what is so familiar to me is that um the way that my family did it uh familiar with african traditional religion and how things go is mm-hmm. that the eldest got to play first in the yeah. family mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the family and the eldest you know may be the matriarch or the patriarch who is 80 years old sitting at one side of the table and then mm-hmm. the youngest is supposed to sit at the other side of the table uh, oh i love that yes yeah so mm-hmm. that's how i i grew up and i found that out that this is almost is very similar to the serving um tradition mm-hmm. in which um in african traditional religion yes. you know so mm-hmm. I'm speaking specifically in um, um, Orisha because I am an initiated priest in mm-hmm. Oshun. Mm-hmm. Um, so Orisha, I'm a um, Iyal Orisha, Olosun. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned, I said, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I ain't got to get used to this because this is how I, <laughs> I grew up anyways. But it was amazing mm-hmm. about these customs that yeah. is the same same thing that's how you know that is a branch in which African Americans come from that's right you know 
Um, so that's where I get uh, the, what do you call it? The confirmation. Mm -hmm. The confirmation mm -hmm. that the African, the Africanism or the African energy is very much prevalent and alive in who we are today and mm. who we were before. No shame. You know? mm -hmm. It's undeniable. undeniable. Now, you have, if you have the education mm -hmm. and if you have the exposure, you mm -hmm. can't, you, you're not going to be able to unsee it at all. That's right. That's right. You're right. Absolutely. And um, I remember, well, one of the, the ways in which I make sure in terms of the ancestral um, honoring, and I think that sometimes gets left out in a lot of families, tell their stories. Tell their stories. I tell you, my daughter hasn't met hardly any of the elders because she was the last, like one of the youngest born out of five kids from my mother. She knows people because I talk about them all the time. I give them stories, whether they're funny little anecdotes or, you know, little, just little sayings that they used to say or um, things that they did. And, how you know, even just how the family is when we would get together and, you know, all the stories to keep them alive in the family. And we need to tell their stories over and over and over again and tell your children to tell their stories as well yes mm -hmm. yes yes mm -hmm. yes that is a big part of honoring it's mm -hmm. a big part the biggest mm -hmm. part of honoring that's what we do when we gather together mm -hmm. next thing you know you know start we start talking about oh, uncle joe uncle joe yeah. passed away three years ago right then right we start to start talking about grandma may we just did it, it just it just no. comes out like, and remember she used to come and she would come down the stairs <laughs> you know <laughs> And it just lights up the room. And the nice. reason why it lights up the room is because all those people that's carrying the DNA, all those ancestors in which that we, it lights up that it, that DNA inside of us. And it, yeah. it creates, not creates a memory, but it ignites the memory that's already there because we're yes. talking about them. And mm -hmm. so therefore their spirit is there. Mm -hmm. Their mm -hmm. spirit is there. So that, you know, you touched on keeping the spirit alive. Mm -hmm. That's what really definitely helps keeping that mm -hmm. spirit alive. Mm -hmm. Talking um, about the spirit yes. of that person, because usually when we talk about the memories, it is the spirit of, that we're talking about, yes. the spirit of that person. Mm -hmm. the, something about a spirit of a person creates a memory. It leaves a lasting impression. Yes. You know? So um, that's one thing. Yeah. Uh, the way that our people raise us, they try to raise us in a certain way so that people will remember us in a certain way so that mm -hmm. spirit of us is always mm -hmm. brought mm -hmm. up, you know, that we have shown them so that mm -hmm. we can continue to le live on to, you know, what we say, uh, don't embarrass me, but don't act <laughs> like I ain't raised you, and so on <laughs> and so forth. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> and it, 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 it sticks. It does stick. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it does stick. It stick. Um, you know, we have these little things and these little quirks, and mm -hmm. that helps us with that. Yes, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> like I raised you. We heard that all coming up. <laughs> That's so That's funny. Sweet. Oh, I brought back a memory. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now, <See that>? um, <laughs> there we go. And the laughter you were talking about with with, with uh, Hi John, you know that. Lord, you, I'm getting hot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we we covered a lot, and I, I just love this discussion because it's so rich, and you you talking about things about hoodoo the, the ancestral legacy, our culture, you know, that oftentimes just gets glossed over like it doesn't exist or that it's so, you know, lacking in some kind of way. Because even with traditions from our ancestral lands that are still in existence and they have come over here 
sometimes, you know, that viewpoint, like you said, people didn't realize there's, there's traditions going on and have been going on and the churches and the, and, and all of that, it, it passed down and you don't even know you're coming here thinking we, we didn't have anything and we have had it. And it's so much ingrained because I have to say when it come, came to the type of um, chattel slavery here in the U.S., it was so diabolical and so thorough of mashing and destroying everything that was related to our culture, who we were, um, and our land and our customs to the point where they, you know, it was harder for us to hold on to them. So that strength that we had in interweaving it so you can't really tell it's there. You know, you can't really tell it's there. It's in the it's in the food, it's in the the mannerisms, it's in the way we do, the way we meet, and where we meet, and how we meet, and how we celebrate, and all of that. It's not, you know, so distinctly outside of, you know, you know, like this little gathering here or that initiation here or whatever. It happens as a part of, you know, a big pot of soup that just keeps going, that that gumbo, that that stew, you know, it's just constantly on the stove and it's, it's not, you know, it's just nourishment. So um, I just love the fact of what you, you know, you're bringing here and in, in terms of, you know, people realizing and recognizing and giving that honor and that space to what we had. Cause you know, in other countries now it's bad, no matter where it was. Okay. No matter where it was horrible, but I think the culture was able to survive a little bit more in other areas than it was here in terms of the sacred initiations and all of that. And honor to those ancestors who held on despite, you know? Um, so anyway, but I just wanted to put that out there that we was really like, we could not drum. We didn't drum. You drum, you die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's why yeah. tap dancing and the, the sticks playing, you know, the sticks and the tap dancing and the different way, the boot dancing and those types of ways of rhythm. That's mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. we played them out was in those ways physically. So no, you couldn't hear the drum beating, but we made it beat anyway in the way that we could. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, you know, speaking of, you know, um, you know, the church and um, drumming and so on and so forth and not being able to do so. Mm -hmm. um, that has a lot and also dancing, right? Because you spoke <laughs> of tap dancing too. You know, that we wouldn't we wasn't able to drum because they thought that drumming was more like a signal, you know, <laughs> of you know, people that can communicate with each other. Yes. But they didn't Over understand. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand, you know, the hoodoo aspect, mm -hmm. um, which was the spiritual aspect of hoodoo, um, and the drumming and the tapping and the dancing and the singing and so on and so forth brought down a different type of connection and different type of communication was mm. to spirit mm. and through this communication to dance and tapping and and in drumming came down possession yes because mm -hmm. what happens is that when we come from people when you get carried away mm -hmm. the spirit just comes and takes over you you know most mm -hmm. times if it's not a particular spirit in which they're calling, many times is the spirit of the ancestors mm -hmm. that you are connected to. Mm -hmm. But you also talked about initiations. There are certain initiations that did happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so, no, you do not have to be initiated to practice hoodoo because it's already embedded into the culture. So you need to practice mm -hmm. culture. So you are a of it. However, there are certain people that had skill set mm -hmm. um, uh, such as Father Watson um, mm -hmm. who uh, actually initiated Zora Neale Hurston the uh, great mm -hmm. Zora Neale Hurston um, mm -hmm. into his secret mysteries and his temple mm -hmm. uh, was said to have been born from African uh, one of his parents I know for sure is said mm -hmm. that he said was African of mm. from continents of Africa. So mm. now remember, the late and great Zora got initiated into memories um, 
I want to say she was saying like around the uh, the 1920s, a lot of her literature was released in the 1930s, the late 1930s. Mm -hmm. And so the people that she was initiating under in their temples, if they're saying that they were so close to Africa, See, mm -hmm. remember, see, this is just the 18th century. Mm -hmm. They were so close to Africa that their parents are African themselves mm -hmm. that some of those secrets were still embedded. You know, mm -hmm. we may not ha have had a name for it, but those spirits was embedded, you know. And so uh, she uh, initiated uh, into the secrets of uh, the snake. You know, they called <laughs> it the great snake, but most likely it was Dambala. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and also there we do come from um, ancestors again they receive uh, initiations is this recordings as early um, I know the early 1800s many of us was initiating into secret societies Mau Mayu mm -hmm. Mississippi was mm -hmm. uh, established in the 1820s well before the uh, abolishment of enslavement mm -hmm. so that was the 1820s all black people but guess mm -hmm. what they were initiated into secret societies mm -hmm. Yes. They, wow. this, you know, these people had mm -hmm. secrets and they brought it in hoodoo because it was a, uh, you know, it was something that they lived by, you know, mm -hmm. so things that you live by the culture is mm -hmm. aware of it, you know, because you have to spread it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so there, those initiations exist. And so tidbits of the temples and the secrets were spread throughout the culture as, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And so you had some people that um, went towards the specifics, meaning those people that wanted to be workers, you know, mm -hmm. um, in that sense, um, the paranormal sense. And then mm -hmm. you have people in hoodoo that were workers in more of the nature sense and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And so it just all came together. And through the Great Migration, um, it it went on up into like places where I'm born and raised in Chicago, mm -hmm. Illinois. Mm -hmm. And so it it don't just stay in pockets of the South anymore, right? You know, that's another thing that people believe mm -hmm. that oh, we're so segregated. Not not all hoodoo is the same. Always oh, becoming more of the same mm -hmm. than what it used to be. We're not <laughs> separated anymore. See, you and I, we having a conversation now. You know, we from different places. Yes, and I'm able to talk to you. You. You get familiarity what I have what I'm talking about and um and so Learning. on and so forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's because we've come together as a people. Yes. And because of that, I can see if by our doing, by this generation, mm. we can make hoodoo more of a reality for it to be a religion in which that we want it to be. Mm -hmm. Because some people do consider it a religion. I would not take that up away from them. That's but it right. can be more on a, uh, a stance in which that a mass of people comes yes. together. Yes. And how we formulate um, and establish and recognize all mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. the ideology in which that we all follow. You know, mm. now we already got embedded into our culture. Yes. Now, but when we create a written statement mm. about that, mm -hmm. mm. oh, I can see it happening. I can see it happening. Mm -hmm. But we got to do the work. We have to. And I love that you, yeah. you've done this interview because that's going to make people that has um, education and understanding for what who the is to do the work to make sure that that happens. You know, yes, and yes. get more of an established and recognized religion. Yes, you know. And I'm not saying that you know, what I mean by recognized religion. Religion is recognized by the spread and understanding for what it is all throughout. That's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the understanding of what hoodoo is, is spreading mm -hmm. out to different countries. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, not, what, but it is a misunderstanding. I'm sorry. So <laughs> they know hoodoo is this, but then mm -hmm. there's a misunderstanding of what it is. Yeah. They think, oh, I'm practicing hoodoo because I got a jar and I mm -hmm. put a frog in it and then mm -hmm. I put your name and then that's hoodoo. Right, right. Mm -mm. No, no. Mm -mm. hoodoo is more mm -mm. than that. Way more than that. 
It's more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, like I said, I'm happy that um it's it's becoming more popular, you know. Yes. Even with the bad, even with the bad. Yeah. Be it. Because that, you know, you can correct that. You can mm -hmm. counter it, I should say, counter it with the right information. Um, because to keep it secret or to keep it, you know, somewhere, you know, out in the in the, you know, trenches somewhere instead of bringing it to be accessible to those descendants who is our ancestral legacy, it's our inheritance that, um, you know, we need to have these talks, more talks, and like you said, an establishment of a, a recognized written version of the core values of hoodoo for people to at least agree upon, you know, for the different factions, the different people, the different places and locations, you know, because just like in Lukumi, there's a gazillion different Lukumi houses that do things. There's a base, but then they do things according to their house, you know, same with the Ghanaians, the Akan tradition. There's a gazillion of them and they do things according to their particular house. But there are certain things that are foundational and central. That, mm -hmm. that that are agreed upon across the seas, across the lands, wherever you will find devotees of those traditions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, you I know. love that idea. Is that something like that that you know is it is it in the works yet? Or like the written down kind of concepts and viewpoints? We got to together. We gotta figure I don't know. I know I ain't in it. If I want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's something that that you know now that we're talking is out is it's been put out there now so maybe we're yes, talking about yes. it because i want to learn I'm, more I, I think we, i think we're about to manifest something i think we about to because i have somebody else too that i definitely would love for you to meet that he's also hoodoo and i know him basically through social media too and if we could kind of at least have like a, uh, some type of meetup, you know, one time at least just to see what the possibilities are, that would be great because it he's old be. school like you, you know, generations deep entrenched, you know, and he does a talk on Clubhouse on a regular basis as well. Okay. Yeah. So I try to connect you two together and then, you know, the conversations can begin. Sounds good. That mm -hmm. sounds great. Yeah. Yes. We got if if ain't nobody else gonna do it, we gotta do right. it. We are talking about it, so we gotta get the ball rolling. If it even if it does not succeed while we're here, mm -hmm. at least you know yeah. we have people that's gonna come after mm -hmm. us that can pick mm -hmm. it up and make it a reality. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, yes, yes. for the next it, generation. It has come so Ooh. far. It's come so far for it to be so young. Mm hmm. And I'm calling it young because Af the African American ethnic group is considered the youngest di diasporic group. Mm -hmm. And so, Fudu was uh, established by African Americans. It is mm -hmm. what it is. Fudu is young, but it's so powerful. And it mm -hmm. has, like I said, it has so many elements that mm -hmm. are core in, in, in relation to make it as it for it to work. You know what yes. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, so we have come so far in hoodoo, mm -hmm. just might yeah. as well get it started. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Now, you know, I love me a good book. I love my instructional books. I love my fantasy books and my fiction and all of that. But a lot of people today, because I guess of being, I guess, social media and, you know, being separated and not all in one spot, they, you know, they want to pick up a book and think that they can, you know, jump in to hoodoo with a book they find. Now, in your opinion, um, how, how do you feel about that? No, <laughs> no, because. Now, I'm not saying books are not. Um, um you know, they can't be uh, conducive, you know, mm -hmm. they do serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand people are trying to find their way. Um, I also have some formal education in cultural anthropology. And mm -hmm. the, cult the cultural anthropologist's job is to get out there and do the footwork mm -hmm. in many aspects, not just one. Mm -hmm. So... My understanding and what I see a lot of people fell, falling short, and mm -hmm. I'm going to use Doronel Hurston as an example 
of someone who did their job of understanding who do more, although she mm-hmm. herself mm-hmm. lived it, mm-hmm. right? She was a cultural anthropologist. She did mm-hmm. not just read books, but mm-hmm. she went and talked to the people. Mm-hmm. She did, and she did studies and um, African studies and African diasporic studies as mm-hmm. well. She went and, bro- and visited our brothers and sisters in Jamaica and also went through ceremonies and obia mm-hmm. and, and all type of stuff. Mm. She went and did that. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do all of that that Zora Neale did. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, in order for you to understand voodoo, you got to start with this core and the core is the culture. What is yes. culture? Culture mm-hmm. is uh, politics. It is um, <clears throat> Ken, mm-hmm. understanding Ken, it is food, mm-hmm. it is a uh, song or mm-hmm. uh, music, mm-hmm. culture. It has everything to do with societal norms of that. Mm-hmm. So if you figure out this, or you understand, you work hard to understand the societal norms of mm-hmm. any tradition. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's where you're gonna a lot of things to start to come mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. In culture and anthropology, you have to find a root of why people do what they do. Wow. Okay. And you're not mm-hmm. going to understand the root of why people do what they do mm-hmm. by leaving out what makes a person behave the way that they do. In mm-hmm. culture and anthropology, you got to take a course of ritual, religion, and magic. Literally, that's the name wow. of the course. Really? Mm. Because mm-hmm. you can't be out there trying to assist somebody who is an archaeologist. Mm-hmm. And they find something that may be spiritual, and you mm-hmm. know nothing about it. Right. That's your job is to know something about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So that's why you got them. All of this mm-hmm. matters. Mm-hmm. All of it matters. So you got to, you know, if you want to know more about hoodoo, don't just say, "Hey, I want a book mm-hmm. that's going to teach me how to." Uh, burn a candle, work a jar, or make some powders. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. You got to study the logic. Mm-hmm. You got to study the logic of the people. Mm-hmm. And um, to this day, um, I don't believe in capping knowledge. So to this day, I still study. Yes. Yes. I still Me too. study. Mm-hmm. I, and I love my talks with my elders and my family. Mm-hmm. And to this day, I'm still finding out things, you yes. know? I swear I am. I was just talking to my mom and my cousin, who is my first cousin, but they're around the same age. Mm-hmm. Um, so my uh, my so my family is older, you know. Mm-hmm. But I just sit there, and they I, I mentioned Vitz va- vapor rub and healing the bottom of your feet. Next thing you know, they come giving me a recipe of what my grandmother did before I mm-hmm. she passed away before I was born. God mm-hmm. rest her soul. They brought it to your room, but. You know, they come telling me a recipe of what she did in order mm. to pull out ailments or mm. uh, negative yes. spirits and also to heal yes. you with the VIX. So I, of course, I knew about the bottom of your feet. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, she said, no, they say, no, we well, see what grandma used to do. Or my mom would say, oh, well, my mom used to do. She put it on the back of the neck. She put it on the forehead. Then she would put it right up. Funny, uh, uh, no, you make your nose do this all <laughs> and make your mouth open. And she said, and what happened is the tongue would stick out and she would put some on your tongue. Mm-hmm. Yes. My mother used to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, things like that, just even mm-hmm. having conversations, yes. you know, people think you got to go find one person out in the woods. <laughs> talk, to your family. talk to your people. Talk to your family, then mm-hmm. read the books and read the coach. Right. Don't go straight to trying to figure out how to, you know, do a love spell. Don't do mm-hmm. that. Because you ain't <laughs> never going to understand why you're doing it and when you're doing it how, and, or the logic behind it. You know, my, my father told me a story about my grandmother, who was his mother, mm-hmm. who had to help somebody out of someone who mm-hmm. put a love spell on, on a man. Mm-hmm. He said, he said, my grandmother was so upset. He said, I didn't tell you, bring that candle on him. And then, it, <laughs> you know, this man was running straight <laughs> all through the streets and everything. He said, that man was out crazy, blah, 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 this and that. And I'm telling 
Oh my goodness. But these are things that are not that far removed. Mm-hmm. They're not. not. You know, bring the family reunions back. Yes. Because I'm noticing that we're getting far away from that. That's true. We are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is a tradition that's embedded mm-hmm. in our culture. What happened? What you happened? Know? And talk oh. to the old people because a lot of times mm-hmm. the younger folks don't want to sit with the old folks and just let them talk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And don't be going to ask all crazy questions talking about, but what you know about who did they look at you? They probably <laughs> look at you crazy. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's just right. let them talk. Like you said, just let them talk. And trust me, you're going to start noticing and you're going to hear some things. It's like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. That's a little different. Mm-hmm. Get my little pen and paper. You be- go with them. You better have a pen and paper. You better have better. a recorder or something. Yeah, record or something. Because <laughs> next thing you know, they let a recipe slip out your head, your mouth. I mean, they mouth, and then next thing you, you know, right. you done found something about hoodoo. Yes. You know, but don't mm-hmm. go out there, uh, you know, just pressuring them, trying to figure mm-hmm. out what they know mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Myst- uh, in, re- in regards to mystics, because a lot of People who practice hoodoo, even spiritualists in the spiritualist uh, temple, they will call themselves tr- Christian, you know, yes. although they were doing things that was not Christian like to yes. them. It was if mm-hmm. you can find it in the Bible, mm-hmm. you can do it. So casting mm-hmm. lot, prophesizing, so mm-hmm. on and so forth. They said, no, I'm Christian. I don't know what you're talking about. But then next thing you know, they're throwing the bones <laughs> because throwing the bones is casting lots. Wow. You can tell them they can't cast lots. It's That's in the Bible. Right. That's right. <laughs> you can't tell me I can't get a word from God. It's in the Bible. <laughs> you can't tell me I can't right. mix up that prom- that pomegranate and that myrrh and that frankincense to <laughs> increase the love in my in my home. It's in the songs of Solomon. What you talking about? I can't, right. <laughs> you know, I can't do that. <laughs> That's right. And that and the how about Leviticus? <laughs> the recipes in Leviticus. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! The, the 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 list of things to bring to the altar to burn. Mm, mm, mm. All on burnt offerings. Yes. Oh yeah. Whole list. And if this happens and that happens, you got to bring this many sheep or whatever animals and incense and the animal fat and all this different stuff. I was like, when I picked up the Bible one time and looked at that, I you know, because I was never raised Christian. Um, but we had a Bible and my mother, you know, had the reverend come and pray over us and everything like that. But, um, you know, but so I wasn't really knowledgeable about the Bible. So one day I just opened it one and Leviticus, I said, oh, oh my goodness, this is stuff we do. <laughs> we do. It's spiritualism and, and, and look at me, and, you know, uh, very similar in terms of you know the action and might the ingredients might be different but <laughs> the actions are very similar in order to cleanse and to clean away things that are hurting or harming the community yes mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely <laughs> so, incorporating the hip and all that yes you're right all yes right. So um, what are some of the biggest misconceptions about hoodoo? I know we kind of touched on a few of them already, but anything else come to mind that people either come to hoodoo for or think hoodoo is about? Yes. So I know we talked on um, in relation that hoodoo is just about spells Mm -hmm. or just about working with roots, you Mm -hmm. know. And as far from the truth, I have seen people um, explain, oh, root work and hoodoo is not the same. Excuse me? Mm. Root work is an umbrella term under hoodoo. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And so hoodoo is not just this narrow frame. It mm-hmm. is. It includes a multitude of understandings. Mm. The multitude of understandings has its roots in relations in how we see things Mm -hmm. and how our ancestors see things in this country. Mm. And so I see a lot of people say that hoodoo is a mixture of Mm. Native American and European and Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. No, (laughs) hoodoo is African-American based on the lens 
in mm. which that we see things mm. living in the country with the other ethnic groups. Because if you notice anything in Africa that African Americans do, it may look similar, mm -hmm. but we don't do it the same. That's right. So mm. we can't help that, you know, we are American. You can't mm -hmm. take that out because this is where we're born and raised. Mm -hmm. However, the ideology and the logic and why we do mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. may be different. And so, yeah. no, it's not a mixture. We mm -hmm. are. Uh, that's another thing I have realized out of the African diaspora. I have realized African Americans aren't identified for who they are as mm -hmm. being standalone. Yes. Know? Mm -hmm. It is something that is identified. I want to say even in genetics, they're able mm -hmm. to find point mutations that are uh, that are indicative to African Americans now. Really? You know, yeah. absolutely. Oh, I've okay. taken over nine DNA tests. I've <laughs> had um, many sequences, uh, my DNA sequence, many different times, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and so on. And so there is. Um, there is a certain distance points that mm -hmm. will pinpoint because of the admixture that mm. will um, that will actually be able to tell if that person is African American or not. Or not. Mm. The same way DNA mm. can tell if a person, um, well, if if DNA can be analyzed and they can tell if a person who passed away that may be a Jane Doe or a Joe uh, a John Doe, mm -hmm. and say they were living in New York, mm -hmm. they can take the teeth test the teeth and they're able to tell if that person was from New York because there's certain things that happen as mm. the teeth came formed mm. or as they continue to consume the water there's things that you can detect mm -hmm. you know so, wow. it, it, that's why I say I, I am aware I am mm -hmm. aware that African Americans were like the youngest group and mm -hmm. so therefore we don't really get that Mm. recognition and we are mm -hmm. really um not just from the transatlantic slave trade but we are also from the intercontinental slave trade that's right and so we have ancestors that were from jamaica we got ancestors mm -hmm. that were from cuba mm -hmm. we got ancestors that were straight from ghana and mm -hmm. so on and so forth and a lot of people can't figure us out mm -hmm. but we are our own people yes because, yes you know you know, because mm -hmm. they also acknowledge when well, they don't do the things the same way. Okay, well then mm -hmm. acknowledge, mm -hmm. acknowledge that, and mm -hmm. we we just go oh, big old. We'll be a whole big old happy family. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> so long okay. as you acknowledge it. So there is a misconception of thinking that hoodoo is a mixture. It is not a mixture. You wouldn't mm -hmm. go on and say Cuban look at me. Is a mix. No, you're gonna call Cuban look at me. Cuban look at me. Right. You're gonna That's call right. condom blay. Mm -hmm. Condom blay. Right. You're gonna call Beninese uh, mm -hmm. voodoo. Beninese voodoo. You're gonna call Haitian voodoo. Haitian voodoo. It comes mm -hmm. from Haitian people. It is not a mix. Yes, it right. is Haitian voodoo. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. um, if it, you know, you, you're going to call um, Orisha traditions in in Nigeria. Orisha, uh, maybe uh, Esheshe, Orisha, Bule. You're going to mm -hmm. call it that. Right. You're not going to say, oh, well, it's a mix with some <laughs> Beninese. It, you know, it's a mix of Afa and, you know, and maybe, no, you're not going to do that. Right. That's no, right. You're not going to do mm -hmm. that. So, who mm -hmm. is its own tradition? And, yeah. like, that's why I say I want it to be well. I wanted to be recognized as a religion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, but until these things, this, these understandings and these things is cleared up, I, mm -hmm. I think things is going to pe more people are going to be on the fence by that. So anyway, I want to, okay. I want you to let everyone know the work that you are doing in, in your, you know, the, in your life and your life path and what, what you got going on. Okay. So, um, a lot of people do know me as Mama Yana um, because uh, my establishment and my footprint has been set on in Hudu as an African American woman. In addition to that, um, me being initiated in ATR, oh, they would not let me 
let hoodoo go anyways. You know, they say, I don't care if you got a crown, I don't care if you did it. Ancestors is number one. So, um, and my own ancestors told me that I, that's where I needed to make sure I put my footprint in. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of people come to me for hoodoo services, um, mm. especially as it relates to divination. And so mm. um, I divine for people, um, by throwing bones, I read playing cards, mm-hmm. I read uh, smoke, I read, I even do biblical uh, mancy and, mm-hmm. you know, so on and so forth. Um, and also I am, um, I have exposure and I have training and understanding how to do old hoodoo workings mm-hmm. as it relates to um, side by side with the divination, because with divination, here comes pres- uh, prescription. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so um, I do prescriptions for other people if they want me to, or I will direct them. Mm-hmm. I'll also offer mentorship and I have classes. In addition to that, um, those who are looking for referrals and maybe they're looking to get into uh, maybe in uh, Orisha tradition, um, I do refer people, so on and so forth, mm. um, or even in, into Palo, because I'm also scratch and Palo can be mm. Madre de Agua. Mm. So um, if anybody's looking for that, you know, I do direct to my elders, I will say mm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have Patreon um, mm-hmm. that is very hoodoo centric. I may share um, thoughts and ideas uh, in mm-hmm. regards to African tradition of religion as well. Mm-hmm. Um uh, and the Patreon is Mama Yana. I have YouTube. It's also Mama Yana on YouTube. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, um, and then I have the Hoodoo Culture by Mama Yana on um, Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And then I have people that come to me um, on Facebook, uh, Diana Adiefa Ocean, Diana Adiefa Janae. So. Mm-hmm. I A D E Y E F A. That's my mm-hmm. Ifa name. Mm-hmm. So Diana Adiye for to name. A lot mm-hmm. of people know me from that page. Mm-hmm. It's hard to work all the social media uh, stuff. So <laughs> yes, I know that's a lot. But I'm gonna have for everybody. I'm gonna make sure that um, Mama Yana's contact information and all her social medias is in the description, so you'll be able to reach out to her. Um, let me tell you the content that Mama Yana gives is so rich and so deep and so powerful. Y'all want to definitely check out what she's got going on because she contributes for the heart and soul. You can tell the love and the heart that goes into the work that she does and the information that she shares. Um, you know, there are a lot of people out here walking and talking and they don't have the background. They're just for show. You want authentic people in all any of the traditions, but in hoodoo and and ifa, all of that, you need to get connected. If you want to get connected, please reach out to Mama Yana. Sure, I'll give a final word, you know, mm-hmm. and it's going to be off the top of my head. Um, you know, I just pray that uh, hoodoo does go far and continues to go far. Mm-hmm. I, I pray that even with this uh, this interview. Uh, that it does shine a light on some people and it reaches even one person. That's enough. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I pray for the love and the joy and the healing of my people and to continue to heal. Um, And so that we understand that we um, are people uh, who are strong and resilient and continue to persevere. Mm -hmm. Because I see, uh, although I see my people uh, having problems, we're still climbing up that ladder. Mm. And I know hoodoo has a lot to do with it as well mm. it's because it's embedded in the culture. And so, um, you know, I pray that it goes far. I pray that we go far. And we continue mm-hmm. to, um, you know, multiply. Yes. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> because that's what the ancestors wanted. They wanted us to continue on. They didn't survive and they didn't, um, they didn't succumb to giving up for no reason that's right and so we shouldn't use that um in vain we shouldn't think Mm -hmm. about that in vain we shouldn't walk in vain 
may we continue to lift up our ancestors uh, and may we continue to come together and work together. Yes. Wow, that's beautiful. Amen, Ashe. <laughs> Thank you for those beautiful, that beautiful prayer. Um, I can't even say anything more after that. I want to thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for taking your time to be with us and to share with those who get in touch with this channel and see this video. And, um, you know, I look forward to potentially doing some more stuff in the future. What, what we talked about here. Yes. We all be that. Absolutely. Anything, <laughs> yes. anything for mm -hmm. us. Yes, absolutely. Yes. It's, I'm always honored. I'm always honored. I'm always grateful. Um, like I said, this is my favorite subject. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm 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 for it. I, yeah. I make time. I try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> Um, I want to thank everybody who stopped on this video and took the chance to um you know, listen and get the content and, you know, please keep, you know, liking the video, sharing the video. This information needs to get out there. So thank y'all for, for coming to the channel and watching. And again, I thank my esteemed, honored, beautiful, wonderful guest, Mama Yana. Thank you again for being with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>